I'm Alexandra Kreis and you're listening to Outer Travel in a Journey. Journeying now for 30 years into the life and practice of yoga, I have met many who have taken interesting turns when past extraordinary bumps and reached unexpected places. People with whom I shared conversations about everyday struggles, intimate realizations, larger questions, ideas and dreams. So today I'm passing on the mic to one of them so we could hear and celebrate the wisdom in people's differences and experiences. A very warm welcome to Outer Travel in a Journey. Once more with me, Alexandra, and my current guest is Victoria Überegger. Hello, Victoria. How Hi, are you? Hi, hello. Good. Mm. How are you? <laughs> Good. Thank you. It's May and we're looking out and it's so dull. How's it like in Innsbruck right now? The sun is shining, actually, and the, the trees are green already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's very tempting to look out there. And I always think like, oh, I'm going to go out. It's blue sky. And then I went out this morning and what happened was it was so freezing. You know, I was like, I can't sit outside here. <laughs> I planned. Anyway, um, just deviating from introducing you. Sorry, dear listener. Well, Victoria Uberecke is currently obviously in, uh, in Innsbruck, which is in Austria, and she is um, or she has specialized in holistic interior design. And this comes because she combined her love for dancing, but also for yoga and the interior spaces and the expressions they can bring. So yeah what brought you there victoria what did you make you know and uh, what brought me to you. interior holistic interior design mm. um i'm born and raised in south tyrol which is in the italian alps and um actually there's a, a story um from my childhood that i could start with <laughs> please um, so basically, when I was um, two and a half years old, um, we were taken away from, when I say we, I mean my sister and I, we were taken from my parents because they had some mental health issues going on at the time. And um, luckily, my grandma, she stepped in and said, hold on, I'm going to take those girls and I'm going to look after them. Mm. And she lived in a beautiful big house that um, belonged to her own mother. And when she died um, due to some heritage issues that wasn't split correctly or uh, in an unfairly way, we ended up in um, a very, very old horror house in the middle of a beautiful tiny little city. You have to imagine there's um, like this picturesque city and there's this one old building that really you can imagine um yeah. the, the adams family house but in yeah. brown rather than black yeah. and it had this mm. big uh, old wooden door that you had to kick in and you had to go down a few steps and it was all dark and moldy mm. and it had five stop uh, five uh, um uh, five levels and we lived in the attic yeah um, and just every time I had to hit that door on the on the ground floor to get up into the attic, this feeling, this energy, just uh, this angst, this scaredness came over me and, and I had to run all the way up on, in, into the attic. Wow. And um, after a few years, we moved out of that house. And I, uh, I realized now today that this building ha had such a, a strong energy that made me feel um, very um, anxious as well. I always had this feeling of a little man chasing me when I was going through the staircase. Mm -hmm. All the doors were locked. And I mm. just realized today, because not that as when I was a child, but today that the, the buildings that we are living in um, are so important how they are designed and what story they are telling and um, it just the general the general make of them um, 
either supports you or can restrict you a lot because yeah. I also took the, all those angst and fears that I accumulated in that house mm -hmm. out into the social life that I had. Wow. Na yeah. Naturally so. I, I totally relate to that. And uh, first of all, just to clarify, how old were you when you moved into that house? Do you remember? What I was you about uh, six, five or six years. Yeah. Yeah. I had, yeah. Similar, I mean, we also lived in an apartment house, you know, and I also had like really big issues around the basement stuff you know mm -hmm. like we had to always go down and do the washing in the basement and we had to do and my mom would send me frequently down into it so I know mm -hmm. what you're saying sometimes mm -hmm. um, buildings have their own kind of energy it's not even like I also heard people talking about like the inheritance of mm -hmm. the inhabitants of the building is also mm -hmm. an energetic effect but I liked how you started off like that it's kind of designed to tell a story or to make you be in a certain story. Mm -hmm. And I do that even with a mu museum here in Berlin. There is a Jewish um, museum where they're trying to really walk you through the space as an experience the Jews had in Nazi mm -hmm. Germany in the war when they've kind of been collected and put into um, the, the different containers and where they kind of sh were shipped with, you know. So, yeah, absolutely mm -hmm. relate to your fears and how that kind of like if we if we don't have healthy counterparts in our lives outside mm -hmm. how we kind of keep carrying that into into the yeah. other life and that really drove you to then do dancing or uh, yoga well um no the that was that's my my personality really yeah um, um just to finish the story also that when we moved then into that other apartment the um the angst and the scaredness that I had just disappeared over the t over time. Oh, okay. So I went into this new home and I felt the new the, the, how how differently the whole surrounding felt. And I was able to sleep through the night again. Oh, and yeah. um, that was quite that was quite interesting to for me to to look back at when I was studying then um, um, all those different. Uh, also yoga and um yeah that was quite interesting to to look at it from that perspective then how how quickly it can change as well yeah. just to, yeah yeah so what you're saying is like you know change your environment and so you can change your mood and you can mm -hmm. can stabilize your mood i totally feel like that you know like if yeah. you we moved into this really big apartment that is also on the top floor but with a lot of windows and there was mm -hmm. that idea of spaciousness in here you know like we were totally in awe when we saw it first and mm -hmm. I spoke to somebody about the move because I wasn't quite sure it wasn't really in my line of finances at the time mm -hmm. you know like it would have been like a, a big interruption and she encouraged me to to look at the possibilities I would create from there so that mm -hmm. the flow comes back you know into my life and we decided, my husband and I decided at that point, we wanted to explore life a little bit more artistically. And so that space has really given that uh, to okay. us. Yeah. Good. And that changed a lot for me. You're right. I totally believe in manifesting your life through the spaces we live mm -hmm. in. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. Important. Yeah. yeah. Oh, keep telling, keep telling. What happened next? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I started studying interior architecture really I, I, nobody really thought that I would ever study interior architecture, interior design, anything like that. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew I'm creative or I knew I'm, cre I didn't really know I, I was creative, but <laughs> uh, just mm -hmm. over, over the years, that was something that um, uh, I, 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 I had this gut feeling I have to go abroad and I have to get out of the mountains and see what's over, over those mountains. Mm -hmm. And so I went to Dublin and I started um, studying interior architecture and it was tough it was very tough it was a tough um course to study um yeah. and so then i started getting into yoga as well hmm. to to get this balance a bit uh, more uh, between sitting on the desk and working day and night i had basically no social life because i'm just that person that wants some when they start something they just get into it a lot yeah. um and so I started uh, yoga 
with you actually <laughs> back in Dublin. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, that's how we know each other. <laughs> mm -hmm. And just a whole new horizon opened up for me. Everything just made more sense to me. I, all of my projects in college, some had um, this holistic um, connotation to it. Like all the projects that I chose were either a holistic center or a cultural center or a yoga studio. Yeah. So I really got into studying all those from the very, very beginning, all those mm. topics from the very beginning. Mm. Um, and yeah, so that's kind of my way of getting into the, the interior design and then the holistic um, branch. Let's go a step back because mm. I think I'm very curious. There was something you said about the yoga and the, the quality it brought to, the, uh, to your life, which kind mm. of connects me always into my wisdom but I'd like you maybe to spin it off from your side first mm -hmm. you know what do you think really happened when you started to see life differently because you were engaging with your body in that mm. way yeah it's so important um it was such a such an important time of my life because I I at the time I was like a little hamster in a wheel that just and then with yoga this pause that is so necessary to actually to be able to create from the heart and to reflect and um, to create something with meaning you have to stop and you have to be with you and sit with you and deal with yourself basically yeah so that's yeah yeah, yeah. And that stillness and the busyness, these two compounds, you know, that we, um, that make our life move forward. We like, like as Westerners, we think of trajectories, like you say, you know, you become fixated on results. So you work, work, mm. work, work, because you mm. think you're on a trajectory, you're on a target, you're going to move mm -hmm. forward like that, like an arrow. Uh, arrow and of course we do like you know when you watch it in fast motion you see something mm. moving forward like that but uh, in fact the arrow would be swinging you know like everything mm. in life and these pulsations and yoga in particular um, that comes from tantric yoga you know are called spanda which means con uh, contraction and expansion and to me contraction and expansion always reflects the polarity of life in mm -hmm. in a sense of like we cannot always just go 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 open 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 but we have to come back mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. you know like you cannot just open and study and work and work and work and be out there but you have to kind of bring it home into the mm -hmm. interior space of yourself exactly yeah yeah and uh, and there to develop to see what can you um, keep and what do you mm -hmm. need to throw out and mm -hmm. i think exactly of, yeah yeah, yeah that's exactly what i'm doing with my clients then as well yeah. where we, we really start on focusing on what they really want so we go inward we sit down we depending on the client obviously not everybody wants to meditate or do yoga or dance to sit down and 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 figure out what the the core feeling is of what they want to experience when they're at home uh, of each individual room and we go back and forth so we're basically starting maybe with the hallway and we 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 start in in, in even vision boarding and um, we, we start in in, in um, sitting down and then creating and then mm -hmm. coming back to that feeling again so it's as you said it's expanding extraction and we do that really with every room mm. yeah beautiful it's, yeah so the, the, decluttering is one of yeah. the first steps really after yeah. um, doing the big vision where we go inward yeah. first and mm. then declutter where we ha would have three boxes. The first one with all the stuff that definitely has to go away. The second box with all the stuff that we are not sure about. And then the third one that it definitely has to stay, but we can't keep it at the moment because we know it's not supporting us in, in the way mm. we would want us to support mm. at the moment. Yeah, that's a very kind of famous sorting technique, but I'm yeah. sure you're also familiar with uh, Marie Kondo, right? She has mm -hmm. that uh, in or out kind of sense yeah. of, 
And I was just thinking I once saw on Netflix the show that they also produced around what she is doing these days, you know, and to me, having studied uh, energy in people in front of me, mm -hmm. you know, like I could almost like uh, to me, the sense is there if somebody is doing a, a prayer, you know, I can see it immediately. And when she comes into the house and bows down and honors mm -hmm. the house, mm -hmm. I mean, it's so clear that she's doing that. And it's exactly. coming back to that idea, what you said, you know, like once you made the inner space, the stillness in you, she, she allows there to become stillness to the entire mm -hmm. place. So the space can talk back. Um, are you using her techniques as much as the previous one you mentioned? I don't even know what name. I'm not, uh, well, I'm not using really any techniques. It's more, oh. it's, it's one-on-one -on -one with the person. Mm. So it's very individualized, depending on the person and what the person wants to go through as well. Yeah. It's never really about me or, or what I want to create or what trend is currently in or what the mom or the dad said we should do with the space. It's mm. always going back to the person that wants to feel in a certain way and wants to create certain habits in the room or wants to experience or wants to um, dignify certain elements. Once I, um, I helped a woman, she had all these newspaper articles from her dad who died years back. Yeah. So we decided to create this big um, art piece of it and hang it in the hallway. So where mm. people come in, they can have this first uh, contact uh, and talk about it and um, dignify his, her dad as well. Mm. It's always very personal. Every, yeah. I think every home should look completely different to, to the next person's home. There's, because everybody has different ways of experiencing and expressioning. And yeah, so it, there's and not really a technique. Feel, and how they want to be guided. Yeah, That's yeah started, exactly. You know, yeah. with your experience yeah. that the, the way the house was designed, it was kind of bringing terror to your very own. Yeah. Story, yeah. You know, and... It mightn't have to, to somebody else's, um, you know, maybe mm -hmm. some people can live with that. They can just shut shut this all off and just go down the hall and kind of not see yeah. it. My sister would be like that. She yeah. she wasn't terrified by that house. <laughs> I yeah. was. Yeah. And, and that's so significant to be like, um, as we were talking about um, that one of your main bases is like to say my home is my castle mm -hmm. you know like that mm -hmm. that's one of your mantras you mentioned before the show mm -hmm. um, I totally relate to that and this story that I went through came to my to my head this morning where mm -hmm. um, where I have been also living in Dublin and I came from this uh, spaciousness of Germany where you can afford, you know, where you could afford because of the rental laws and everything to live in a quite attractive space. The more you mm -hmm. earn, the you know, like the bigger mm -hmm. the space becomes. Of course, I went through all the other things like everybody with little money. And then I moved to Ireland and suddenly the money I made wasn't equi equivalent to what you could rent. And mm -hmm. It was such a doom and gloom time for me initially, like you, you know, like I would find an area where I want to live and think how attractive it is. And then all I could afford in this area was the most ugliest place, obviously, yeah. you know, like <laughs> something so run down. And, and, um, but I found my little niches and then I met uh, somebody through yoga, uh, to, through the yoga teaching course. And she invited me home and that was the first time I felt like I was really landing in Dublin because I had the same base mantra you know my home is my council mm -hmm. it's my place of protection I need to mm -hmm. recenter recalibrate in it and I came into her house and I couldn't believe it this is a proper house people yeah. love living here you can play music here you can cook there there's a mm -hmm. room where we all gather and where there's creativeness there's a mm -hmm. room where you can retire you know like that it had all that kind of beat, uh, you know, the different beats of that mm -hmm. um, to it. And that I really clearly remember as a landing part in mm -hmm. Ireland. And I think that was always then detrimental for me to look out for when I started moving around a little bit more again after I left um, Dublin myself, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. had a similar experience in Dublin with all the small basement um, apartments. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. 
Yeah, and of course, when you can't afford to look, you're not going to look closer. You know, that's also healthy, I wanted to say, um, mm -hmm. to those out there, you know, who live in spaces that, and they kind of wish they had different spaces. But um, I wonder, is there something, Victoria, one can do, you know, like even if you li live in, let's say, like you, you have an experience, you come into the house mm -hmm. and the house might not, you know, like the hallway, the public hallway might not be what you're looking for. What could you do maybe to your own space? To... Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. There's plenty of things, for example. Well, if you if you think about that, uh, let's get a, as an example, a rented apartment in Dublin, which is mm -hmm. usually quite damp and uh, mm -hmm. small and obviously already furnished because that's just the way it is in Dublin. A lot, mm -hmm. of, them, a lot of them are already fur furbished. The main thing is really anything that you are adding to the place should be of, natu of, of, of a natural material. So trying to get away or staying away from plastic as much as possible. Plastic has, has not a, a nice feeling to touch. So you, mm. you, the more, the, the more time you spend inside and connect with plastic is, um, it's not very healthy and mm. um, because realistically if you think of it we are spending 90 percent of our lives indoors mm -hmm. and if we bring that piece of nature indoors we are reconnecting with with that sense of 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 quietness of um of of naturalness of, of ourselves really and it it helps us quieten down and and um yeah, bringing as much as nature as possible, I would say, and getting rid of all toxins that are already pre-existing before you move in. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Uh, what What do you mean uh, particular by that? You know, toxins are they in the are they in the walls or are these toxins? What, what yeah, they can be in the walls in form of mold mm. or mm. in the carpet. Um, mm. I, the carpets usually are a, a big pool of bacteria, um, especially if it's a, a rented apartment. Mm. Um, the ventilation is very important as well, trying to ventilate the space a lot of times during the day. Um, and, and then you can, once you did all that outer shell, all that outer um, as much as you can obviously if you're buying a place mm. there's much more you can do to it mm. um, yeah and then what are, what are, what are you bringing into the space yeah which is um, very important in terms of the all the little things that you're buying thinking mm. of um, equipment that you can use for a longer period of time where they have natural a natural feel to it mm. so um, uh, for example, if you're buying um, washing liquid, washing yeah. up liquid, it can be um, liquid not in a plastic bottle. Like this, it's 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 all the smaller things really that your eye sees, and then even subconsciously you're you're creating this little bit of of, of anxiousness sometimes in yourself that you don't really know where it's coming from or you have for example when you walk into the um hallway you have a little set up a little bowl where you put your keys in just this mind decluttering and, and knowing everything has its place um, yeah. it's just very helpful yeah 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 i love it and is there you know um i heard you well we introduced you as a holistic interior design is that um something that's out there as a branch so can people who would be interested to maybe get a little bit more help on that level yes. and are not in innsbruck or ireland where you work for it has um, become more and more popular now over the years mm -hmm. um when i started uh, college there was like little connotations every there and now but i think it's it's a reflection of of the general um the zeitgeist at the moment yeah. that uh, it's just becoming more and more popular and people are more and more into um, how they live and how how the surroundings can support them and yeah. there's definitely a few holistic interiors interior designers out there that can help you all around the world yeah by now I think yeah and like I mean okay Marie Kondo does, she calls her, you know, like she does magic cleaning. So mm. she kind of goes through this 
idea of creating space by cleaning up and you talked about this as well a little mm -hmm. bit you know like what do you keep and what do you take take out what's the next level to that from your perspective yeah so you would so once we have that we really have this blank canvas where we can step into what we want to create what in what area we want to, to be supported uh, um, what visions do we have what is important or what values do we want to um, um, portray a bit better in a room mm -hmm. and i really think that we we are our home and all the walls they are creating one big vision board yeah and yeah. Uh, yeah, we're coming back to the vision board because that's a lot what i do with people you know like i, I have several courses and coaching courses around Ayurveda and yoga, but on the level almost like you do it, what, how do you design your life? Mm -hmm. And the one thing that is always kind of, uh, for me, the most important thing is the vision part, because mm -hmm. for example, if you want to design your health, redesign your health, you know, you could go and say like, yeah, I want to get rid of the cigarettes or the sugar or whatever it is that's bothering you right mm -hmm. now, or I want to get, you know, more fit. If you don't have a vision around how you want to come out of that, you know, you can have all the willpower you want, you know, but mm -hmm. it's not going to carry you through. And that's what mm -hmm. I'm hearing you say as well. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. All those, all those rooms, setups, all those pictures that we are putting up the wall, they are very, very important and they are supporting or not. It, it can be go, go, go both ways. It yeah. can be very distracting as well you can have a picture of your um ex somewhere on the on the wall and yeah. it can keep you from thinking about other stuff you know that it can go both ways so it's really important that we see all of our walls um as as a as a as a place where we can put our visions on yeah yeah yeah. And totally, and I, we had this vision for this apartment, like it should be a little bit like a jungle. We wanted to get as close to nature as That's we it. can in the big city here. And we bought all these plants, you know, and then they kind of started growing. And then I started to get really in my way because I was also teaching yoga and I was pushing plants suddenly around because I needed wall space for it. And mm -hmm. it, it got really kind of hectic and, um, then there was that part when also when the pandemic started to arrive, you know, and we we were living suddenly in this apartment and it was more used than it would regular mm. be, yeah. you know, yeah. and that makes then also makes you notice how your um, apartment is designed. And a friend of mine who's also, also an architect and used to live in Dublin, she's now here in Berlin with me. He had this idea of bringing all the plants together as a wall and that's how mm -hmm. we created spaciousness within you know creating a room and that mm -hmm. is what you're seeing a little bit behind me yeah. but also you know like we created we created we took the plants all away and it gave some of the part of the apartment again a little bit more clarity and these little things mm -hmm. they mm -hmm. do so much you know you just have to have somebody yeah. who has the idea so i was really lucky to to have her around and i didn't know that you were mm -hmm. doing this i could have asked you otherwise <laughs> <laughs> hmm. yeah, okay. yeah with the pandemic i think every like there has never been a better time to reimagine your home than yeah the, at, at least the first lockdown and anything that is wrong with your home you know it now after the first lockdown exactly, <laughs> exactly yeah exactly and i saw a lot of people running to the only place where we could go shopping here in Germany and that was the Baumarkt you know like where mm -hmm. you DIY shop where where you could also get plans and do shelving and all that restoring mm -hmm. your home it yeah. was actually quite fun to see that yeah. you know <laughs> yeah. mm. it's nice to to do do it yourself as well I think to yeah. actually build that wall yourself or that piece of art it has a much different energy than bu just buying it off the um, off the shelf somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Um, final words, Victoria. What would you give to the listener as maybe a gift mm. of insight or advice on their homes, on their lives? Just keep decluttering. 
keep decluttering um, try not to possess it all and let it go yeah yeah be ready to let it go and know that the most important things stick with you right exactly yeah yeah that's <laughs> what i found thank you very much for your time and coming you to today's shows and introducing us to the subject um and yeah much luck to you victoria became recently a mom so she is stuck in various projects right now <laughs> yeah. so have a good time with your newborn uh, or your, yeah and your family in austria thank you very Italy. much <laughs> thank you alexandra for having me it was a pleasure <laughs> thank you listeners see you next and hear you next week bye if you enjoy listening to my podcast, please consider to become a patron at patreon.com slash Alexandra Kreis and pledge your donation.